Genshin Impact. You know it, you've heard of it. I got into Genshin at the end of 2020 after all my friends started playing it because I love the unnecessarily detailed character designs. And especially this guy right here. And of course, he belongs to a group called the Harbingers, who are the main villains of the story. I wanted to put my own twist on them, so today I'll be redesigning some of the Fatui Harbingers together with a guest. Hello, I'm Sami. Some of you might know me as Monster Maniac. I'm honored to be here with you today for this collab, which is most definitely not about bullying Hoyo and their questionable character design decisions. Let's get into it! <laughs> Okay, I already said that Skaramouche is the reason I got into Genshin, and to no one's surprise, he is my absolute favorite character in that game. He's edgy, he's mean, he's OP, he's purple, and he's perfect. <laughs> Except when Genshin finally released him as a playable character, after two years, they gave him a completely different look. And like, don't get me wrong, his outfit is still cool, and I like the lore behind it. But many of us fell in love with his original outfit, I think. I get why they couldn't give us that one, because he left the Fatui Harbingers and his outfit had like three Fatui symbols on it. So this redesign is essentially my attempt at keeping the flair of his old outfit, and especially the color scheme, while reworking it a bit. His OG design is super iconic, but I also feel like you can tell it's one of the first designs they made, especially in comparison with his playable design. So yeah, the first thing I did was to give him ball joints, because he's literally supposed to have them in lore, but Hoyo's chickened out and just didn't do it. And I also wanted to add them, especially since in their other game, Star Rail, there is a character with ball joints looking at you, Herta. I honestly feel like it's, so, it's such a letdown that they took away the ball joints, because it honestly would make his character stand out way more. Like, it's such a unique design yes. point, and yes. ripping that away is just tragic. It's like a major part of his story too, so like, come on. Oh my god, he, he should have had his like, Pinocchio moment where he becomes a real boy at the end of the Subaru <laughs> Oh quest. my god, yes. One thing I wanted to change about his outfit was whatever was going on in his chest area because the OG design had an Electro symbol there and the Wanderer drip had this like weird scroll carrier thing that I personally don't feel like fits his vibe. So I decided to give him a chest cavity. I thought it's, it's his where heart. he- It's just his heart. Yeah, yeah, it's um, where he would have stored like the electronosis if he had it. But now there's like some sort of electro core in there. Do not ask me on the specifics though, because I'm out of touch with Genshin lore. And I only went to Fontaine like literally a couple days after not playing for ages before this recording. No, Will, I will judge you for not playing Fontaine. It was Do too I am good. doing I the story. I am doing go. the Archon quest right now. I am doing it. One thing I prefer in the Wanderer design over the Scaramouche design is that they chose to make his pants resemble an actual Japanese garment called Hakama. So I stuck closely to those. I tried my best to replicate the way the fabric straps are wrapped around his waist, but it might not be 100% accurate. Honestly, the fact that you actually went into like the research and looked at what's like actual like Japanese clothes, like I just winged it. That's gonna be very um. <laughs> no, okay, listen. This this is the one where I feel like it's the most culturally accurate, quote unquote. But you'll see with the other ones, okay? The design was kind of looking too symmetrical, so I wanted to add something on her shoulder and tried giving him like a cape. And of course, my Skarmush cannot go without his iconic hat. I think this is probably one of the only times I've drawn one of his hats without literally tracing over a 3D model. It's kind of bullshitted together, resembling his old hat, but without the mask and the electro symbol at the top. I also like how you gave back the original, like, large veil that he had. And I can also see you added, like, still, like, some extra, like, danglies on the side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just miss the veil. I really miss the veil of his design. I think it, like, makes him look larger, given how short <laughs> he is. The, the veil was really iconic, and it's, like, sad that they removed it. So, yeah, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to add it up back in. So, this is also the reason why I removed the cape I had earlier, because, like, he already has like a bunch of stuff going on there, so he really didn't need the cape anymore. So his hat alone is like already enough to make this, his silhouette really unique. I also kept the ropes on his hat a lot more simple than they are in the game. Because honestly with the sleeves already having dangly stuff on them, he really doesn't need more stuff that could seriously hurt someone if he did a pirouette. 
For the colors, I pretty much went with his original color scheme, which I absolutely love. Like before I knew this character, I had no idea how a color scheme with red, purple, blue, gray, and gold had any chance of working, but somehow it slays so goddamn hard, and I think many Scara mains will agree on this. Then I added some embellishments to his chest, hips, and arms. Wanderer has patterns on his body that glows when he's using his powers, which is cool, so I essentially did the same thing, but changed the patterns up a bit. They are inspired by daffodils, which symbolize rebirth, and I actually named my Wanderer in-game Suisen, which means daffodil in Japanese, so it's a cute touch. I also added a couple more patterns to the sleeves, because it's not a Genshin design if it does not have 50 patterns on it. And yes, this Wanderer slash Scaramouche is an Electro user. I know there's lore for why he's got an animal vision, blah blah, but I want Electro Scaramouche, okay? Electro is best element, not biased. I don't like the color purple more than any other color at all. I'm honestly so happy to see, again, the ball joints, because that's just iconic to him, and I may or may yes. not also have a bias for that. And his original color, color palette, I'm so happy to see his original color palette. Because while I really like the blues of it, again, it also kind of makes him look like the Torre. So that's kind of, mm, mm -hmm. given their history, that's kind of a no-no, mm -hmm. in my opinion. After the crystal on his chest, I love how you did the shading. That's like edible. That's, that's actually <laughs> girl dinner. It's like candy. It is candy. Crunch on it. Definitely. Probably not healthy. Pro you, you will probably die, but it's fine. It's worth it. Why unhealthy if looking so edible? So true. So, the Torre. I have problems with you, and, um, well, I have more problems with Hoyo, actually, with the way he tr they treated him, because he got advertised in the comics as a kind of, um, the kind of mad scientist that's kind of, like, funny, mm -hmm. but he can be really scary. I really, really, really do not like his in-game design. Um, I feel like it's just trying to like go more into like the. I, it's hard to say it like without trying sexy to come man. Across like the... it's like Tumblr yeah. sexy man vibe. So the first one was Tumblr sexy man, but he's like silly, goofy, and like you just want to like shake him in your hands. The new one is kind of more like I don't know, serious, I guess, and it's it's not the same vibe. Mm. The thing is, like, I do not mind a cold and calculating math scientist villain, but, like, the again, the way he was advertised to us is, is like, he has much more flavor, essentially. It's like yes. all the Harbingers are super serious and super edgy, and, you know, child and him, you know, they got very different personalities compared to the, compared to the others. So I wanted to bring that back. Um, so, about the design, um, I obviously had to bring back the sharp teeth. Hoyo, how can you give Booth Hill sharp teeth but not my boyo? So real. Um, the Torre. One of the few things I really like about the new design is obviously the Plague Doctor mask, the very, the very bird mask. Mm -hmm. But I also take some issues with it because what I found really weird on the in-game design is that he has two Plague Doctor masks. Like, just decide, either have one on the shoulder or just have it on his face. And also given the fact that he's, you know, not entirely human anymore, um, it fits more to just have one singular mask on his face. Obviously gave him the iconic earrings, however I try to make them more like a tiny little needle. Because, well, he's a doctor, so you know, why not just have a sick needle earring? I'd mm -hmm. wear that. I'd get my ears pierced for that. Hell yeah, But dude. yeah, no. His outfit... I had a lot of lot of issues with as well. I wanted to bring back the kind of like iconic big like jacket. Like mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to give him kind of like a, a tiny little coat over his shoulders, kind of like some actual plague doctors do. Like this have this like tiny little coat. I also gave him like I feel like much more fancier outfit given how he was also like more fancy looking in the comics. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, it could have been just the fact that he wanted to appear uh, somewhat normal. He wanted to dress dapper for the occasion, essentially, which, like... This man would definitely not dress up for the occasion. He just wears the same clothes all day, every day. He doesn't have time to change. Stinky! St he reeks. Stinky. He absolutely reeks. So I put some straps on the jacket. Uh, it's a callback to how he also had like straps on his arms. So I guess his new design also has those. I was deciding if I wanted to give him like fancy pants and like 
dress shoes. You know, he's originally from Sumeru. I did kind of make him more like he's from Fontaine, like we originally thought where he'd be mm -hmm. from. But no, I, I decided to keep the baggy pants because uh, baggy pants for life. Hello. I am, so true. I, I am obsessed. I also kept his boots because... Well, I feel like I'd get hunted down if I didn't keep the shiny shoes that everybody just went immediately feral over. <laughs> Gave him his leather gloves because, um, you know, they're easier to clean where they, when you're, like, um, elbow deep in not safe for work <laughs> stuff, I guess, you know, uh, innards and etc, etc. The way I try to bring back the kind of initial, like, silly vibes that he has because the thing is his original design his mask is much more expressive than what we have right now like the expressions oh, yeah. are just completely gone right now i i like to think that there is a little mechanism inside that kind of like gives him like kind of sort of like eyelids oh so he is yes. silently judging you um and you can see that he is judging you He's not entirely emotionless, even though he's essentially a robot. Yeah, no, um, his mask is essentially a bit of a combination of the mask that he is wearing on his face in the game and a bit of a combination of the mask that is on his shoulder. So yeah, no, he got the big beak and the like eyes and then the top of the mask is kind of reminiscent of the mask that he's actually wearing on his face in game. Um, I tried to give him much more similar hair to the one that we saw uh, in the comics. I really like the short short fuzzy hair because you know he still cuts his hair in a way that like doesn't annoy him because i feel like the long hair that are like in the front of his face mm -hmm. in the game that gets in the way of work so no True. he cuts his hair regularly but it doesn't look good hence it looks very messy we yeah, love that for him love that for him yeah um i don't he doesn't deserve love but love that for him <laughs> doesn't deserve anything actually he doesn't deserve anything. He he he. To be fair, uh, the things he did to Scaramouche, actually. Yeah. Talk about, talk about Scaramouche. Uh, according to lore, he kind of used Scaramouche as a base for his segments. So I like to think oh. that on, under all that clothing, he actually is also kind of a ball joint. Um, mm -hmm. Ball joint mecha. Okay, wait. Let me grab colors now. Grab Oops, colors. Actually, grab colors. Colors are mine. I used the color palette from in-game. I know you wanted Pink Tore. Why did we not um, get Pink Tore, dude? Come on. Strawberry so Tore. I am so sorry. I swear I'm sorry. But um, I feel like the fact that he's only like colder colors is a good way to show that he's, you know, a cold cut character. The only like warm color there is is his skin color. I just wanted to highlight how he isn't really like a human anymore, both physically and both morally, I guess, mm -hmm. due to the experiment that he has done on multiple like individuals, including, well, children, which is not good. So I tried to keep his overall outfit like a brighter gray. So, you know, it looks like a doctor's robe. Obviously, the leather stuff is darker colored. Um, I tried adding a bit more of that glowy blue because... We love glowy blue. We love glowy blue. Yeah, no, I'm sorry to say he is my last favorite, I believe, from the redesigns. Oh, damn, um, dude, he looks so enough, cool. <laughs> I'm sorry, I left the Tore Nation not long ago for um, our Lekino Nation and Capitano yeah, Nation. Yeah, understandable. Well, you'll see more about that later. And the, the the fact that his eyes can actually have emotion. I want my I want my stingy my stingy crazy doctor back. The crazy that is like a hundred percent loony. Yes, um, the silly goofy. He has not a single sane thought in his head, and he and he does the hee hee hoo hoo. He does the hee hee. He does the hee hee hoo hoo. So the true. could never. So the true. Tore, in game, the Tore could never do the hee hee hoo hoo. Yeah, no, that's my the Tore. Okay, so for the second character I wanted to redesign, I was very torn between Alekino and Columbina. Because on one hand, I really love Alekino. She's like such a king and just really iconic. But also I really like her in-game design already. And I don't think my version would end up looking very different. So I ended up going for Columbina since I had some interesting ideas for her already i'm so excited for her i i want to see biblically accurate angel baby you better have put a bajillion wings on her i'm not gonna forgive you <laughs> otherwise the first thing that came to my mind for her was actually ballet dancers because she kind of has that vibe it's like the kind of frail unthreatening girl just doing her whimsical little dance meanwhile she could literally destroy your whole bloodline if she wanted to because she's like one of the high-ranking harbingers. 
I'm honestly looking forward to learning more about her lore when Hoyu decides to feed it to us, but yeah, I gave her a ballet inspired dress with pointy shoes. Columbina in the Commedia dell'arte is often symbolized by white doves, and Genshin Columbina has wings on the back of her head, so that's one of the main themes I went for with this design. I added several wings to the frame of the dress, as well as a vaguely wing-shaped fabric on the skirt, and of course I couldn't skip out on the mask covering her eyes either. There's a lot of theories about why she has a mask over her eyes and why we only see her with her eyes closed, but I decided to draw her with her eyes slightly open here. Now before we continue yapping about the designs, let me introduce you to the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. I'm currently taking a class on creative writing by Lincoln Mitchell to help me develop my original world over on Skillshare. This class helped me come up with a lot of cool ideas by using brainstorming techniques like the ripple effect. There's also many classes on character design in case this video inspired you to make some characters of your own. Skillshare is the largest online learning platform for creatives, so whether you're a beginner or a pro, you can find fun and interesting classes on topics ranging from illustration, writing and music, to marketing, productivity and more. The classes are led by industry experts and divided into bite-sized sections with tasks you can complete at your own speed. Especially with summer break coming up, you might have some extra time that you want to use to improve a skill or learn something new. And you're in luck because the first 500 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. Go test it out yourselves. Thanks for sponsoring the video and let's get back to the designs. And I also added a bunch of embellishments to the dress, sleeves and shoes as well because unlike Sammy I need to add details on like everything. Don't slather me that much please, <laughs> I tried my best. Dude listen it's okay, we just, we just have different styles. Honestly the way you did the wings and everything, I would love to see you like try and design a boss version of her knowing that. Oh, that'd I be will. so cool. A boss redesign video when, dude, listen, Arlecchino, I love Arlecchino's design in game, but her boss design, I'm kind of like, mm, mm. I'm honestly really torn as well because Ooh. she just wouldn't dress like that. But yeah. you'll get there. New idea, new video idea. New video idea. New video idea. <laughs> Epic, okay. Okay, back to the design though. Her shoes also got some wings on them because like, of course they do, like, you gotta have wings everywhere, right? She gotta have the biblically accurate angel drip, right? It's actually interesting how you chose to turn her into a ballet dancer because ballets are usually completely silent and we see her singing in the trailer. Mm -hmm. It's a completely unique take, honestly. I really liked it. I don't know, it's, it's kind of the vibe fits. Like, there's not even like a very specific reason behind it, but it's kind of the vibe. In the com Commedia del Art, the uh, dubs might symbolize her, but the fact that you turn her into a ballet dancer might be, you know, just like the uh, Swan Lake vibe, you know? Yeah, that's also what I got. Her dress really reminded me of like Barbie Swan Lake. <laughs> oh, no way. That, that, those are memories we do not want to talk about just yet. For the colors, I went off of the one image we have of her, or like two images we have of her. Her clothes are a varying shade of white and light grey, as well as some pink, and then blue gems as an accent color. I kept her hair pretty much how we saw it in the trailer, straight, very long, and black with pink streaks. I'm sorry, Will, why, this, why is she giving Twilight Sparkle vibes? She is, I know, I think it's the hair, that's so weird, but yeah, I get it. I think this color scheme definitely supports the innocent looking girl vibe as well. For the finishing touches, I added a couple of patterns onto the gray parts of her outfit and also put glitter on her dress because the glitter brushes, they are too, they just, yeah, glitter. I mean, I guess innocent girls also really like glitter and pink and all that combination, so you know, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah she, gotta, she gotta leave a trail of glitter behind her when she goes somewhere. Oh my god, imagine, she just like shows up to the Harbinger meeting and like, Rosaline's coffin is covered in glitter after <laughs> she leaves. Oh no, dude. That would happen 100%. This kind of fitting because I also gave her animal powers, which like for the viewers who maybe don't know Genshin is like wind basically. And there's two reasons for this. One, I think it fits really well with her wing theme. And since Scaramouche has electro powers in my redesign, Columbina could maybe be the one who flies instead of him. And two, I think that the turquoise of Animal really contrasts nicely with her outfit, which is honestly like the main reason I picked it. I honestly just have a mental image 
of Columbina like doing Scaramouche's ultimate right now since you said that <laughs> she's gonna <laughs> steal his ammo. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! Um, should have given her sharp, sh um, sharp ballerina shoes. Like, yeah. oh my god. Shoes. That is so true, dude. Oh my god, that would be so iconic. Her just like stabbing you with her shoes. <laughs> dude, we all know that Harbingers cannot be fully sane, you know? She she gotta be a little bit like crazy. Crazy insane, you know? Just like I was once. No. Yes. The comment okay. section. Think of the comment section, Sammy. You gotta keep that in. You oh, gotta no. keep that in now. <laughs> I honestly, I'd never wear a skirt. However, that looks really good with like the kind of like wing like design over it. Yes. Like, around the shoulders. I really like Ooh. the way the wings kind of wrap around her. Like, are they attached to her body? Is it like her wings? Or are they just on the dress? Okay. Thank you for giving me a good design that makes me think whether or not those wings are real or not. Because I know Hoyo will not spoil me with real angel wings. Oh my god, wait, it's, it's my turn. Shit. Yep, yep, it's your turn. I love how you also had your other sketch in the background for a Oh yeah, reference. no, I wasn't about to make work, more work for myself. Plus it's easier to like, um, you know, have like the same placements and everything. Okay, so, Capitano. Um, there is not much to go off about. The most we know is like some voice lines um, from Child and Arlecchino. He's very powerful, but also, again, according to Arlecchino, he is to be respected for his power, but people also, like, people respect him more for who he is, which is very interesting given how he is possibly the most overpowered character in the game. I'm sorry, he wants Karamuch to be <laughs> the most powerful being in Tevat, but I, I believe in him. This I, is why I turned Scaramouche into a god, dude, it's fine. We we have the, the copium headcanons. The copium headcanons. Just like Columbina, we do not know his full design yet, although in Arlecchino's short animation we do kind of get to see what's under like the big like um cloak from the harbinger meeting i kind of scratched what we saw there minus the helmet because the helmet is perfect well mostly i did change a bit of it slightly the chains felt a little bit too much for me i give a much more sharper bit to his helmet on the mm -hmm. side kept his kind of fluffy hair like the back and you know the length of it as well at first i wanted to give him a big kind of dark souls-esque armor but i decided to go against that because i wanted him to feel like well you know that he can still essentially beat you without a big strong armor with multiple layers to protect mm -hmm. him the only kind of like big armor that he has is just massive gauntlets because i swear i do not have a bias but i might do so yeah, I know, he got big gauntlets. Um, I kept the same kind of like, the same kind of chest design that he had in the Vinder Lasso trailer. The kind of like design on his chest makes him look as if like, as if that was like a skeleton. Like you can see that how like the... the ribs? Yeah, I, I like how the outfit kind of looks like as if he had like a rib cage over his chest. Yes. So part of me also wanted to like put more skeletal elements, but it also didn't make sense. But I also really liked this, so that just <laughs> kind of got kept. He also got baggy pants because the supremacy, the supremacy never stops. So most people headcanon that he will probably have a claymore given his like large silhouette and like the fact that he's a big strong captain. And at first, a few years ago, I had the idea of him having pole arm, but um, this is just purely me, but after Arlecchino getting a pole arm, I, I cannot get any more pole arms. Give me sword <laughs> at the, like, you just give me sword. I So I gave him a sword because, you know, he's knowledgeable. He leads the Fatui army. So I like, I like to think that he can fight, but he also fights more elegantly, which is sure, if you can elegantly like fight with a claymore, that's kind of a, that's kind of cool, right? But kind I still want I wanted to be like, yeah, no, it's probably more elegant with the sword, so he's just gonna get a sword. Mm -hmm. In the half body, I had him hold a Cecilia flower. As far as we know, he is like much more delicate um, compared to compared to the fact that he's the leader of the most fierce army in Tevat. My headcanon is is that he is possibly one of the most 
carrying harbingers out of all and that's how he ended up getting um the position of the captain that's how he ended up as the leader of the fatui army is because he actually cares about the soldiers and makes sure that you know they can get home or that they're getting the treatment that they need if they if they fall if they fall that they don't just and all die it's ironic that i also really like the tori and i really like him because while the tori sees people as ex as expendable test subjects capitano is completely the opposite he values each and every single life and that's how he got his position um as the captain as the head of the fatui mm -hmm. army um i also like to think that he is also possibly the the most loyal harbinger out of all of them Oh my god, wait, I forgot to talk about the colors. Um, generally, his color palette stayed the same, very dark grays that are like slightly more brown, mixed with like kind of like muted golds and a bit of silver. Mm -hmm. I also included some of that blue that is that you can see in like the little flower on his helmet. Yes. Yeah, um, I I love that he's he's definitely like the most desaturated as well. Because mm -hmm. sure, Arlecchino is also like mainly black and white, but she got a strong red while he's also kind of like muted. I like to think that he has some secret trauma spice going on, and oh the my God. colors just bring back his grief of something. I gotta have the, the, the traumatic backstory. Absolutely. Um, actually, I just had an idea now, which is like. The fact that he is dressed in like darker clothes than most of the Genshin characters is actually highlighting the fact that he is constantly grieving because you know there is always there's all there are always soldiers that never make it all the way back home. Yes. And he is constantly play, paying respects to those who have passed on the battlefield. So that's, that's kind so of playing good. into it. This better be canon now, dude. If this doesn't happen, then Genshin will be sued, dude. They already have been for multiple grievances for both Karamush, the Tore, and many more to come, as yes. I assume. But you know, I, st I still like the game, like yes. a lot of the designs, but uh, we also have immense beef. <laughs> it was easier to kind of like design him as well because I had much more freedom given how, you know, we didn't see his entire design. We just saw mm -hmm. part of it, which was enough inspiration to go off of. I added my own little flavor here and there, but yeah, that's it. That's for it. That's for Capitano. Slay. Let's get cooking. Let's get cooking. <laughs> <laughs> leave the leave this in the video. Just just you. Let's get cooking. <laughs> cooking the tsaritsa. Bro, no, Boiling not the in a pot. I'm getting cooked. <laughs> All right, now for the Tsaritsa. Obviously at the time of making this video, we didn't have any idea what the Tsaritsa would actually look like. So this design is completely from scratch and is probably gonna end up looking different from what she will look like in game. But yeah, I made my Tsaritsa like, first of all, taller than Columbina and Scaramouche, obviously. And I also made her like a bit bigger than the Genshin models are. I wanted her to look imposing since it's said that the Tsaritsa has no love left for anyone and she's quite literally in charge of the Harbingers and the Fatui, which takes quite a bit of ruthlessness and command. I gave her this fur hat, loosely based on a Kazakh Boric hat, decorated with eyes that kind of makes it look like a crown since she is the Cryo Archon and ruler of Shnesnaya. Originally, I wanted to go a lot harder on the cultural references, but I'm not gonna lie. I kind of ended up going with the flow of things instead, and the clothing ended up being mostly fantasy mishmash, to be honest. The thing is, I feel like you put more thought behind the references to the culture than oil. Like, I just don't- I feel like they don't really care about it either, so you know. Yeah. Some other inspirations I pulled up for this design were the Hersher of Ice from Honkai Impact and Kokolea from Star Rail, whose boss form is inspired by the Hersher of Ice. Since characters like Venti and A are based on characters in Honkai Impact, I don't think it's unlikely that the Tsaritsa will resemble the Hersher of Ice or Kokolea. But yeah, I gave her this loose, asymmetrical dress with a fur collar and a big pin on her chest, along with a coat that's loosely hanging around her arms. Since it's said that the Tsaritsa was once very loving but turned cold over time, I wanted to show that by making ice grow from her body, like she's been corrupted by her power over the years. I also like to think she doesn't feel the cold anymore, so she's not exactly dressed like a normal person would be in Snashnaya. If anyone else wore her outfit in the cold, they would probably get hypothermia in like 10 minutes. 
but she's a god so it's fine. I did still want the outfit to give off the vibe that it belongs into a cold region, so I added fur to several parts of the design, made the coat look heavy and gave her some over knee boots. You can also see more ice growing out of the holes in her boots, which is a neat detail I think. Okay, now I wanted her to hold something in her hand, so I gave her a polearm, and I know that there's already two other polearm arcans, but this doesn't have to be her actual main weapon. It could just kind of be the thing where she pulls it out in the middle of an idol animation, or for one or two attacks for Flare, like Yunjin with her little staff thingy. If this was Star Rail and she could have any weapon, I would 100% see her with a shotgun. <laughs> Don't ask why, but she has that vibe to me. But yeah, you guys can let me know in the comments what weapon you think that Sarita will have. Anyways, to make her look more like she leads a whole ass military, I gave her these pins that you would see on a high ranking military member, and also added this big braid to her outfit. I definitely like the whole like putting the pins on her coat that you kind of mm -hmm. made her more military. I feel like a lot of people go for more of an ice queen look, which mm -hmm. like is not really military. It's like all about fancy dresses. And also a little side note, the pin on her chest, which kind of resembles a Sneshnaya vision, is not actually a vision. It's just, you know, a pin to show that she's like an important person. And also the fact that the, the cryo vision is like gold and silver. Mm -hmm. is like also unique, you know, showing that it's like it's not the same. Yeah, it's not a topic. vision in the first place. Any like, cause she doesn't need a vision, yeah. right? I also made it in like the final version. I think it looks more desaturated. I think than a cryo vision would look. So it's actually just like a pin. So unlike Zhongli, who wears like a fake vision to like um, kind of like blend into humanity, I love how she's just like wearing it cause she can. Yeah. And not because it's a vision, showing yeah. that she knows that she has the authority. Now for the colors. While many people probably imagine that Tsaritsa with pale skin because Shneshnaya is supposed to be based off of Russia, I gave her tan skin because first of all Russia is like super big and there's literally so many ethnicities with different kinds of skin tones living there. Also as far as I know Shneshnaya isn't solely based on Russia in the first place. The Tsaritsa has dark hair that fades into an icy blue since all the other Archons have their hair fading into the color of their element for some reason. It seems like a side effect of being an Archon is that you get a sick free hairstyle for eternity. I actually kind of forgot how their hair like fades into a gradient usually. Mm -hmm. And like, I guess my shading kind of gives that. For the overall colors, I stayed pretty constrained on grays and blues, with her tan skin and golden braids being nice warm accents. I also made parts of her skin snow white, especially around the areas that the ice grows from. The ice around her neck kind of resembles a big collier necklace, which wasn't intentional but it's a vibe to be honest, it gives her more of a royal look. The fur on her sleeves is supposed to look like it got wet at some point and started freezing into icicles. And one of the last touches was to give her some see-through fabric on her chest, arms and leg. Though this fabric has been torn where the ice grew through. I actually yeah. love how we went for a similar idea with the patterns on the body, but, uh, but more about that Ooh. on my side. Ooh, interesting. And of course I had to add some glitter on her outfit because the glitter brushes were too enticing yet again. I love your shading so much and this glitter is literally everything. Yeah. You need to give me that brush later. Okay, wait. <laughs> I'm not, I don't even have allergies. What is this? <laughs> oh my god, no death, please. Dude, just looking at the ice is like choking me. Like, oh, I feel the cold. What, teleported to Snashnaya instantly. Yeah, immediately Snashnaya. I, I do like that you gave her a warmer skin tone because again, it's kind of like gives you like a fox warmth and then again the blues are also warmer like the kind of royal blue but yeah I, I love that you try to like you know put some like references to the actual like country that the region is based off of yes. instead of just jumping in head first because that's what i did <laughs> <laughs> but i bet your design is cool anyway so let's look at that My vision of the Sarita was pretty straightforward. I wanted her to have Mother Snowy Owl vibes, which is like very far away again from like the usual like very ice queen look, which well, she still mm -hmm. has it, but you know. Due to that, I decided to put a lot of fur and feathers on her design. I also removed all the actual icicles from her outfits, which you can still see in the sketches. 
and made her crown slightly heart-shaped to make her look more soft and serene, which I think ended up better than my original, like, more icy crown idea, simply because I feel like it's a good reference to her being, you know, formerly the Archon of Love. Mm -hmm. She looks so huggable, but she probably isn't. She probably is, like, ice cold if you hug her and then you, like, suddenly turn to ice or something. Oh yeah, you could you could probably um, try to hug her, but um, I don't think that would end up well for you. <laughs> if evil, if evil, why so huggable, right? So true. If evil, why soft? Because I like the suffering. That's 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 the plain old answer. We love suffering and we love angst. That's what we're here for. I definitely like her design the most out of the three because you know the freedom was really nice to have due to not knowing anything about her. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, I actually kind of forgot to talk about my favorite part, which is actually her hair. The like two tufts of hair that's coming down in front over her shoulders. Now that I'm looking at it as well, it, it act is actually looking like Columbina. Um, yeah, it also reminds me of Columbina, but... We can pretend that Columbina is, is you know, since she's like an actress and everything, she's cosplaying the Tsaritsa, you know? <laughs> you know? I mean, um, they, their hair is like completely different color, so it's not like it's like a huge... Yeah. Issue. Yeah, I still feel like she was a combination of Columbina and Shenha and the third one <laughs> that I'm completely forgetting about, I feel like, but uh, I actually really love her. Yes. Um, as for the colors, I kept it mainly black and white with a bit of blues here and there because there's simply no ice queen without some icy blues in there. And you know, mainly black and white because snowy owls are mainly black and white. I noticed that snowy owls also have yellow eyes and I, I probably will change that. Isn't it also like the Archons all have the eye color of their element as well? They do, I think, yeah. actually. I also decided against heavier makeup and gave her white freckles instead. So even when she's inside a building, she looks like she's covered in snow. That is uh, so cute. Yeah, that's it for my Teresa. She looks soft, she looks motherly, but she's really cold at heart. That's exactly what I wanted for her. Um, she's also holding, you know, a cryo vision. Because um, she 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 gives those to people sometimes. Yeah, when she's feeling a bit more generous and more motherly and lovely. I'm sure she's lovely. She's just hiding it from us, right, Hoyo? Mm, I don't right? know about that. One thing I just noticed is like how you made the overall like shapes like really soft and flowy, but then you have these like little details like the feathers and like the crown and the patterns on the dress be super sharp and i just love that that fits her so well yeah again it's like kind of a mix and match of um you know it's like generally she's very soft looking but there are those like more edgy and sharp beds that are also kind of like a warning that you know she appears mainly soft but there is a bit of um a bit of spikiness to her personality do not hug do not hug <laughs> no huggies do not even look yeah, she's very tall. She'd probably stare you down. Love that for her. Yeah, I'm sure other people would like that too, <laughs> given the hmm. fact of... The Sims yeah. are assembling. The Sims are gonna you assemble in the comments. Please leave a comment if you are a Sim for the Tsaritsa. Yeah, I so yeah, her. that's my Tsaritsa. Before we look at the finished designs, you can support me and simultaneously get early access to the artworks I make for these videos over on Patreon. You can also get unedited time lapses of my art, secret content, and much more starting at $2 a month. You can also buy the line art files for the artworks I made in this video, but if you're a Patreon of Teeth Tier or higher, you get them for free. Now let's look at the finished designs. Okay, are you are you ready? Are you ready for the Scaramouche? I am. Okay, yes, let's sir. go. Let's go. Give me electric boy. Let's go! Oh my god. It's just like the whole Inazuma vibe is back there again. That yes, we, love we love the Inazuma vibe. And purple. And red. Best colors And all ever. the edginess. And, and all, all the, the edginess, edginess that were ripped away from him. So true, so true, dude. There you may have my Dottore. The sticky yes. bird man. Yes. The unethical. The one and only. He's so bubblegum girly pop, dude. He does look like the gummy sharks. Yes, he, he is as the gummy he shark should. Man. All right, give me Columbina, put her in my hands. Okay, okay, open your hands. I'm opening my hands. Okay, okay, here you go. The wee little baby, look at her. God, I, I love, I love how you just, you just, you just, the amount of things is just like, I am being spoiled over here and especially the sparkles. Mm -hmm. She gotta have all the wings and all the sparkles. Here, oh no, that's Dotare again. Just give me Dotare again, it's Capitano, it's fine. No. Nobody will notice. Alright, here is our 
soft and powerful captain. I honestly feel like I'm gonna be the most, like, I am probably honestly the most proud of him out of all of mm -hmm. them already, so... I really like his, like, monotone color palette, but the way that it's, like, it still reads really nicely, and it's, like, I don't know what to say, man, it looks really good. Sending you the Tsaritsa in the mail. Yes! Oh, the eyes look so crunchy, though. Fucking love how you draw um, icy and crystally stuff. Hell yeah. Okay, okay, wait. She's she so, so soft, pretty. but it's all fake because she's cold at heart, and I'm so sad. And that's all the designs. Again, thank you so much for inviting me to do this collab. And if any of your dear viewers like what I did for the collab, you can follow me over on Instagram. But you could also join Vil's server because you will most definitely find me there. Thanks for being here, Sammy. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, you might also like this one where I design villains for my own story. Or maybe you'd prefer a whole playlist of me redesigning scrunkly characters. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Special thanks to the people making fan art and extra special thanks to my Patreons. Will out.